Hey there, you creative cash flowers. This is Grant Kemp from creativecashflow.com. Today, we're gonna to talk about free and clear properties, how to owner finance those, uh, because simply, most frankly, it's just the most simple form and most pure form of owner financing that there is. Uh, free and clear analysis is gonna teach us everything that you need to know about how owner financing works without mixing in a bunch of the confusing, uh, confusing parts about underlying debt, and buyers and all that kind of stuff. We're just gonna learn the pure mechanics of what this is. Free and clear owner financing means that you don't have any bank involved at all, okay? So let's say that you own a house, you paid cash for it out of your back pocket, and then you wanna owner finance it to somebody. That's a free and clear owner finance deal. The math is much easier. Uh, I'm a simple man, so I need simple math, and this is gonna make it really nice and, and uh, smooth as we transition into understanding where these numbers come from. And then the home value that we're going to assume on this deal that we're gonna look over today is gonna be an ARV of $100,000. I like using $100,000 because when I throw percentages at you, you just take whatever number I said and add 1,000 to it. If I say, hey, it's gonna be 75% of $100,000, well, it's a $75,000 uh, amount that I'm looking for. Sadly enough, uh, that is something that a lot of people uh, that I've taught don't quite grasp. So, so w let's just, you know, again, $100,000, whatever the percentage that I say, add a thousand to it, that's the right number. The 10B2 financial calculator. Now this is something that you've got to go out and you've got to, you've got to get. This is the lifeblood of our industry. This is something that's going to be available on iTunes and Google Play. Now, the 10 b 2 is the one that I have chosen to use. It's gonna be the one that I'm gonna show you screenshots of. I suggest that you get this one because I've, I've worked a lot of them and uh, I have my reasons for liking this one, which I will get into in our 10 b 2 calculator explanation video and tutorial. So I, I, I do want you to watch that. I do want you to figure that out. Um, but you know, you can use a 12C, you can use physical ones, whatever. Any financial calculator should work. But for the sake of just consistency, let's go with the 10 b 2 Like I said, I've got my reasons as to why I like it. You can get it right now on iTunes or Google Play at six bucks, it's $5.99. You know, I, I, I tell you, you can get into this business without any money, but hey, you gotta spend money to make money, right? If you can't take the $6 right now to buy an app, maybe now's not necessarily the best time to be talking about buying houses, but you can do it. Uh, I just recommend having at least a little bit you can set aside for an app. And like I said, this is the lifeblood of our business. The 10B2, I mean, I've gotten to a point where I can be having a full conversation with somebody completely comprehending what they're saying, but all the time, I'm just typing away at this calculator, trying to get a trying to get an offer for them, and that's where I want you to be. And in order to get there, you're gonna have to practice. You're gonna practice, practice, practice. I literally want you to sit down with a piece of paper, just like I did whenever I was getting into this, and write down a scenario and say, what is a $100,000 loan at 9% for 30 years? What's my payment? What if my payment was $500, what would the percentage be? What would blah, 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 blah. Just write it down, just go through the scenarios until this is like the back of your hand. Uh, but again, I do have a tutorial video on the 10B2. I highly recommend that you look at that because there are some kind of behind the scenes things that go on with that calculator that make this a great negotiation tool when you're even sitting in front of your seller. Full disclosure, I don't own any part of this app or anything like that, I just like it, I just use it. Um, okay, the 10B2 financial calculator. It may look a little confusing, Obviously, well, yes, it does look a little confusing, but what I'm gonna tell you is the only thing that matters is that top row. That top row is the only thing that we care about, where it goes from N to FV. Other than the numbers, that's really the biggest thing for us. So let's kind of go through what those are real quick, and then we'll skip on into the rest of the analysis, and you can watch the 10 2 video for specifics on it. But N stands for number of payments. Number of payments. It does not mean that you're going to put 30 in there if it's a 30-year note means you're going to put 360 in there because there are 360 months in 30 years, okay? The next one is I slash YR, that is interest per year. Just as simple as that. One of the reasons I like the 10B2 is that you can just type in whatever the actual interest rate is. If you're charging six and a half, 6.5 goes in there. The next uh, section that you're going to have is PV, which I'm going to call principal value. Really, in reality, the, the PV stands for present value when you're talking about financial calculators, but for, for our terms, for our understandings, principal value just kind of makes sense for us. The next one is gonna be PMT, which stands for payment. Payment, that's a real easy one. What's the payment gonna be? Now, the trick is the payment is always negative. On this calculator, always the payment is negative. I need you to repeat that for me right now. The payment is always negative. 
Okay, well, yeah, I know that you just sat there staring at the screen, scoffing, he's not gonna tell me what to, but I guarantee you, when you start messing things up on this calculator, that's gonna be the thing that messes you up. Uh, nine times out of 10, when there's an issue, it's because somebody didn't put negative in the payment. So just keep that in mind. If you're running into a problem, first thing that you wanna check on here is did you make your payment negative? The reason why is it's a financial calculator. It's an outgoing payment. It's, it's leaving you, that's why it's negative. And then the last section is F. V. FV stands for final value. Final value for our sake is gonna be really easy because it's always zero. In other words, at the end of this loan term, how much is the loan gonna be, right? So since we're doing what's called a fully amortizing loan, which means that we are paying from the beginning and we're paying it down all the way down to zero, that means that our FV is going to be zero. At the end of our loan terms, we will owe nothing left to uh, the bank or whatever. So let's look at this example. Let's say that we own a house free and clear. You're the investor, you've got a warranty deed on this house, so you own it free and clear. If you're gonna sell it with owner financing, it's as simple as this. You're going to put that warranty, of, uh, that warranty deed, that warranty deed is gonna go to your buyer, so they become the owner of the property, and the buyer is gonna give you a deed of trust, you're gonna sign a note with the buyer, Right, so they get the warranty deed and then they've got a mortgage. But that mortgage goes to you. You're selling your property on payments. That's what the owner financing side is. You're selling your property on payments. So buyer comes in and says, hey, I'd like to buy this house from you for $100,000. You say, that's cool. Uh, you give me $10,000 as a down payment right now. I'll give you a loan for $90,000 and you can have the house. They say, cool. So you sign the house over to them, which gives them a warranty deed. That is the warranty deed that gives them ownership of the property. In return, you're gonna get a note and deed of trust signed between you that says, hey, this person owes $90,000 for 30 years at nine and a half percent. And that note is what defines the terms of the loan. The deed of trust is going to say, hey, if this buyer doesn't pay it, I get to foreclose and take the property back or go through the auction process and get it sold that way. That's as simple as that. That's owner financing. That's owner financing in a nutshell. So let's look at a little bit of an example with some numbers to it. So let's assume that we own this house free and clear. We're gonna sell it for $100,000. We're gonna sell it at a 9.5% interest rate. We're gonna do a 30 year term on it. And now we need to know what the payment's gonna be. That's gonna be the whole key to this, right? As you'll hear me mention in other videos, the, the payment is what dictates everything in this world. Much like a lease on a car, uh, buyers want a payment to be reasonable to them. So what we're doing is we're looking at what the payment would be if it was a rental and we're comparing that and we're making our payment PITI, principal interest, taxes and insurance, HOA included, everything included is going to be the same as it would have been to rent. But we need to figure out what that is a lot of times and that's where our trusty handy calculator comes into play. So let's look back over here at our 10B2. If you haven't already downloaded it, I need you to go, as long as you're on YouTube and you're not using your phone, uh, go download it on your phone right now. Uh, if you're on your phone, watch this video because nothing is more important than me right now. Uh, <laughs> but download it eventually, come back, watch this, and work through these answers with me because I want you to get used to typing all these buttons in and, and, and really knowing your insides and outs on this calculator. But let's look at it here. We've got uh, a line of that top row, right? Now, for this calculator to work, all we need to know is we need to know four of the five items. If we know four of the five items, that calculator will solve for the fifth one, okay? One of the nice parts about how this works is like I explained to you a second ago, for our sake, we're doing zero in the FV, always, uh, because we have fully amortizing loans that we're working with. The only time that you wouldn't put a zero in the FV field is if you're doing a, a balloon note. Okay, that's when you might have something, a number to put in there. If, if say you're, you're amortizing a loan, and in other words, you're making the payment as though that loan was gonna get paid for 30 years, but you've got a feature in there called a balloon which says, hey, okay, I'm making the payment as though it's gonna get paid for 30 years, but in five years, whatever's due at that point in time, that entire principal amount that's due in five years, I'm gonna need you to pay that off in one fell swoop. That's a balloon, that's how balloons work, right? But we're not doing balloons, I discourage balloons. Watch our, our uh, Dodd-Frank video, uh, watch a little bit more on the wrap video so you can understand why I stick away from balloons. But one of the big reasons is just regulation. It's just harder to get the, the protections in court that we want 
if there's a balloon feature in there. Now, if you're doing a, a loan like a, uh, like a hard money loan, that's a commercial loan, that's something that's between two businesses, it's you and, a, and an investor, that's okay, balloons are fine in commercial loans, but when you're doing a, 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 a consumer loan, something that falls under Dodd-Frank and consumer protections, you wanna stick away from the balloons. And I'll give you some tips on how you can get effectively the same result of what you would be looking for in a balloon note without using a balloon and while still being regulator, uh, regulatory, whatever, still being within the regulations, getting that qualified mortgage that you're looking for. So anyway, back to the point here, FV is going to be zero. We're gonna keep that with zero. Well, that makes it much easier for us because like I said, on this calculator, you need four out of the five things and it'll solve for that fifth one. Well, we already have FV, so that takes care of one of our items. So really now at this point in time, we just need three of the four things that are left over, which is really easy for us because I just told you those things. We know we're selling it for $100,000. We know we've got a 30 year note on it and we know we wanna sell it for nine and a half percent. So we're left over with our uh, uh, payment, which we need. So in number of payments, that is 360. For a, for a 30 year note, that's 360 payments. Now, a cool thing about this calculator is you can use the calculator just like a calculator. If you don't know how many payments that would be, you can just say, 30 times 12 equals, it'll tell you 360, and then you push the end button, and it's gonna, it's gonna populate 360 into the end field, right? Um, next, we're gonna go to the interest per year, 9.5. You're gonna type in 9.5, you're gonna push the I slash YR button. You're pushing the numbers first, and then you're pushing the, the field you want it to populate to. PV, we said it was gonna be a $100,000 loan, so we're gonna type in $100,000, we're gonna hit PV, and now we have four of the five items filled in. We want that fifth one, so we just push PMT, and it's gonna solve it for us, which is gonna be 840.85, okay? So it's as simple as that. That's how you're gonna run these calculations. So if you had a $100,000 note, and you sold it at 9.5% for 30 years, you're gonna get an $840 payment every month for the whole 30 years. The cool thing about that, let me just show you a tip of why I love owner financing so much. You're actually gonna turn a profit of $202,000, almost $203,000. You're gonna total P&I earned is gonna be $303,000 over that next 30 years. Now, granted, this assumes maturity, this assumes going uh, with a loan for 30 years the whole way through. But that's not terribly uncommon, that happens. We do have loans that continue through the, the entire life of their loan. People that do owner financed loans are a little bit different than people who do their typical uh, conventional mortgages, right? But we just took an asset that was only worth 100 and made 303,000, uh, I'm sorry, $303,000 on it just by knowing how the power of interest works, just by figuring out how that calculator works and getting that going on there. So it's a really, really, really powerful way to do things. Now, I didn't include down payments in this because we'll get into that later. Again, I'm trying to be as, 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 as stripped down and, and core as we can on this look. But this is why I love owner financing. You're, you're turning a lot of money off of an asset and it's crazy how much more money you're getting just from interest. So that example was, hey, if we owned this property free and clear, how do we sell it with owner financing? But we also have to fit our seller in there somehow, right? Like what if the seller owns it free and clear? Well, free and clear sellers most often are gonna be older sellers. Most often, somebody that owns their, their house free and clear is gonna be above the age of 60. That's what I've run into, at least anecdotally. That's what I see. Um, excluding the high equity list, you know, where you're, where you're obviously looking for people that, that have that equity in there. Probate leads tend to, see where I, uh, tend to be where I see the most free and clear properties, okay? So that's your seller profile. That's, that's what you're looking for if you're wanting these free and clear deals. Now, the challenge to an older folk uh, seller is that they don't want to sell it to you with financing for 30 years because the response I get is, I'm not gonna be alive in 30 years, right? So watch our negotiation series. I do have a video specifically on how to address free and clear properties to try and negotiate into an owner finance scenario so you're not having to reach into your pocket and put any money on the table. I do it all the time, it works, and I get you know interest rates either zero, four and a half percent, six percent, is about as high as I go on that, which you know, you're just not gonna get much competitive from a bank for an investment property. But look out for those. Um, one of the things that you need to know about your seller is what their bottom dollar is. Motivation is always your number one target. 
motivation is always one of the things I tell all my students because I do personal mentoring too. So if you're interested, you know, creativecashflow.com, you can look me up that way and contact me. I do personal mentoring. But one of the things I always tell all of my students is I don't care what the seller wants. I care why the seller wants what they want. Okay, it's a, it's a very small way of changing that thought process, but it matters. It matters because we really don't. We don't care what they want. We, want, we care why they want what they want. Because I can't tell you how many houses I've bought off of reading between the lines and understanding what the seller's actually looking for and saying, look, you told me that you wanted $15,000 verbally, but what you explained to me is that you needed some place to live for the next three months. So how about I let you stay here for three more months and we call it a deal, right? I do that kind of thing all the time. I don't like making people or uh, letting people stay in there for a super long time, but I've read past what they're telling me verbally and I've saved myself $15,000. My payment may only be 800 bucks, something like that, right? And so I really effectively am getting away with spending a couple of thousand dollars instead of 10 or 15, but I'm meeting their needs. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to always look for their motivation. So especially when you've got free and clear sellers, these sellers are usually a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, again, they're usually a little bit older, but they understand what's going on with this deal. So you've really got to, you've got to pay attention. You've got to ask those probing questions. You've got to ask yes or no. I'm sorry, you can't, uh, you've got to ask open-ended questions, not yes or no questions, right? You want, you want them to talk to you. You don't want them to say, oh yeah, that's me. You want to say, why are you looking to sell? You don't want to say, so you're looking to sell? Little differences in that. So watch the negotiation series so you can learn a little bit more on those kinds of things. Are they willing to financing it? Uh, finance it? Buying with seller financing is an excellent acquisition model. I love buying with seller financing because as I mentioned in our basic understandings video, it's a way to buy an unlimited amount of properties every month. I mean, you don't have a limit to the deals that you can do when you're leveraging owner financing and seller financing. It's just an excellent way to get into a deal. How much money do they need today? What, what kind of today money they need? Today money versus tomorrow money is something that you're gonna hear me talk about a lot because it's the basis of a lot of the decisions that you've gotta make in your career. Because you've gotta decide, am I looking for today money? Am I gonna do some wholesaling? Am I gonna do a fix and flip? Am I looking for today money? Or am I looking for tomorrow money? Is this something that I can put out as a rental? Is this something that I can do as a wraparound mortgage, as owner financing that's gonna get me paid next year and the year after that and the year after that and the year after that? We need to balance that, okay? I'm a huge believer in tomorrow money. I love tomorrow money. That's where I really like to stick. But hey, especially when you're getting started, tomorrow money doesn't buy your groceries and tomorrow money doesn't pay for your, your, your car bill. So you need some today money in there too. Well, just like that, you need to figure out what their needs are. What does their today money need, right? Download our wants and needs pamphlet because it's got, a, it's got a kind of a unique way to look at this where you can sit it in front of your seller and explain to them, hey, you may want this, you may need this, Tell, let's figure what that out, uh, figure out what that is, and that way I can custom make an offer for you, right? That's one of the really big parts of the negotiation with somebody in this, in this world is that you need to have a custom fit offer to them. They can sense when you're a hammer looking for, for nails, right? Uh, so that is one of the big parts of when you're negotiating, just really di diving deep. Diving deep into what they need figuring out what they're looking for and what, what's actually going on with their today needs. I'll give you a tip. One of my big negotiation things that I like to throw out there is I like to say, do you have any pressing financial needs like a medical bill or a broken down car or something like that that means that you need to get cash today? Um, because usually, usually no. They may have something and if they do, it's usually less than what they were wanting to ask for. And what that does is that sets you up, that sets up your negotiation with them. That says, you just told me that the only thing you need cash for is you need this, this $3,000 part for your car. So you're asking for $10,000, but you said that you don't need that. Now you know what's negotiable. And I love that question because that really knocks out what the today money is and allows you to start pushing towards that tomorrow money. Where do we make our money, okay? Where do we make our money? Well, okay, so we're buying with owner financing, that's great. Uh, we acquire with owner finance. We can dispose of that property however we want. You can rent that property. You can owner finance that property out. You can fix and flip that property. You can wholetail it. You can do whatever you want once you've acquired with owner financing. That's one of the things that, uh, to, to really point out to you guys is that 
Owner financing can be used on the acquisition and on the sale. It's not, it's not just something that you use one way or the other. And even though you may buy subject to, or you may buy a free and clear property this way, you've, you've got the ability to take it wherever you want from that. It's your property. It's, it's your, your decision to make from there. So in order to figure out what you can offer this seller, now that we've kind of talked about who the profile is, some little basics about how to, to, to pitch your idea to them and what you can do with it, what you've got to do is you've got to back into the deal. Now, backing into the deal is how you actually figure out what is the number going to be on that contract that you uh, that you hand them. What is the number going to be when you when you spew out, okay, I can offer you this, right? Backing into the deal is how you get there, and this is a huge skill. So watch the next video, the backing into the deal video, because that is that's the key. That is really how you figure out what this house is worth to you right now today figuring that out based off of information that you're getting with comps, with rental comps, with whatever that is. You've got to back all of the, the financials out of that and then you can offer your seller uh, what needs to be offered, okay? So keep watching. I do encourage you to watch that. I do encourage you to watch the 10B2 calculator video. Download the downloads like the, uh, the once in need pamphlet. All of this stuff is going to be very helpful for you. Like always, I want you to keep in touch. I want to understand what you're looking for, what you're getting out of this. If, you, if you're able to use some of these strategies out in the real world, I'd like to hear about it. You can get me at grant at creativecashflow.com. Uh, just reach out. Again, I do personal mentoring. You can find me online at creativecashflow.com for that. And as always, you know, propelio.com is sponsoring these videos. And, and I say this even before uh, any kind of sponsorship happened, I just really believe in the product. I mean, propelio.com does such awesome work uh, for new investors, for investors who've been around the block, whatever. There's a lot of stuff to offer there. So make sure to look us up, look them up. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all the, all the social media channels, all that kind of stuff. Like, subscribe, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but keep on watching the videos and keep on learning. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.